Hello everyone. Okay, let's have a go at this question. If you fancy pausing it, you can do. But let's first of all read it, see how to go about it. Right, a particle is projected upwards along a line of greatest slope from the foot of the surface inclined at 45 degrees to the horizontal. The initial speed of P is 8 meters per second. The coefficient of friction is 0.3. The particle P comes to instantaneous rest before it reaches to the top of the inclined surface. Okay, calculate the distance P moves before coming to rest. Calculate time P takes before coming to rest. Find the time of P to return to its initial position from its highest point. Okay, let's just quickly draw a diagram here. First of all, we're going to do the horizontal. And there's my incline. We know that is 45 degrees. Okay, this particle has been projected. So let's just, there's the particle. And let's just drop down straight with its mass. Now, the uh, particle is projected. Duh, 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 duh. Do we have a mass? No, we don't. Okay. Don't worry about that. So we're just going to call that M for mass. So call that MG. So this is coming perpendicular to the slope is contact force. And that's running down like that. Okay. Don't forget that's 45. Okay, same angle as that. So this means coming down here is um, MG cos 45 and going down here let's put this in brackets is going to be mg sine 45 so that's slope going down the slope and that's running perpendicular now the only other thing we've got is since this is coming this is going to be the motion is being projected up, so this is particle is coming along, and what opposes motion is friction. So friction is going to be coming downwards. Okay. At this present time, friction is going downwards as that's been projected with initial speed of u equals eight meters per second per second. So that's friction coming downwards, opposing motion. Okay. And don't forget friction. We we'll work that out. We'll just put it here. Friction. When it's active, it's uh, mu times the contact force. In this case, mu is not point three. Okay, that's going to be opposing. Right. Um, Okay, so let's go. Let's have a look what we got here. So we've drawn all our stuff. Particle projected, yes. 45, we've got that initial speed, yes. We've written that down. Coefficient, yes. Particle, now. Particle comes to instantaneous rest, right? So that means my final velocity, V, is going to equal to zero uh, as it reaches to the top of the surface. So Okay, so since there's no other forces acting on it, and all these forces are going to remain the same, constant throughout, so if it's constant force, it's going to be constant acceleration, which implies we can use SUVAT. So I'm just going to write SUVAT here, S-U-V-A-T. So we'll calculate the distance P travels before. So we need the displacement. When it's, we know that the initial velocity is 8. We know the final velocity is going to end up being zero when it comes to a risk. And we're going to try to work out the acceleration. Once we've got that, we can then go back and work this the rest of it out. Okay, so to find acceleration, we can go about saying force is equal to mass times acceleration. And we know that this is coming down and the friction is opposing it. So we know that um, <coughs> we've got m 
so it's coming down we can deal with it um, yeah call it minus mg sign 45 and we also got friction coming down which is going to be now friction in this case is going to be 0 0.3 um, let's just write it here uh, where should we write it let's write it here friction is going to equal 0 0.3 times the contact force is m G cos 45 okay that's what's coming to pause it so that's coming down also so that's going to be minus 0 0.3 mg cos 45 okay so that's coming downwards and that's going to equal mass times acceleration now the beauty here is we can now cancel all the masses out. Let's go get a different color here. So mass is gone, mass is gone, mass is gone. And now we can literally just put this in our calculator and say acceleration is equal to. So if I put um, 9.8 uh, times sine. 45 and we're plus this 0 0.3 times cos 45 times don't forget the 9.8 I'm gonna get acceleration um, now it says 9.00154 so to free some figures 9.01 so that's going to be 9.01 that's what I'm going to get from here okay right so that's my acceleration now I need to find displacement and I've got these three elements so what I can do for part A I can use the formula um, yeah I can use V squared minus U squared equals 2AS I know that is 0 minus uh, 8 squared divided by now don't forget sorry I should have put this was coming downwards and that should have been a negative so that will be a negative um, 9.01 times 2 equals s which is this displacement so therefore displacement will equal so just put that in your calculator we get um, minus 64 over minus 9.01 times 2 and you'll get 3.5 well to three similar figures again 5 5 um, I know it goes 1 6 2 but that's 3.55 meters will be the first one so calculate distance before it comes to rest it will travel 3.55 meters before it comes to rest okay so let's have a look at the next one <coughs> so B calculate the time uh, P takes before coming to rest so We've got that, uh, which is 3.55. We don't need that. We can just use this three elements one, two, three, and use this fourth one. Okay, so just quickly thinking about which one do I use um, in my Savat equations, which does not involve S. So that will be, this might need to rearrange it. So I know that. Um, hmm, use s so acceleration is equal to initial velocity plus uh, v times time okay oh sorry that's, that's wrong let's rewrite that again v 
we know that final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Sorry. Okay. So now let's rearrange that. Take the u to the other side. So that's v minus u divided by a equals t. So that's how we will find out the t. So that will be um, 0 minus 8 over minus 9.01 will give me the time. And they will be both negatives. The two negatives will cancel out. So you just get 8 divided by 9.01 which will give you t equals 0 0.3 figures again um, now my calculator does give me 0 0.88790 so I'm just going to say 0 0.888 seconds if it comes to it so calculate time if it comes to rest that will be 0 0.888 seconds okay um, See, find the time taken for P to return to its initial position <coughs> from its highest point. Okay, so C. Now, <coughs> we know that um, that is its highest point, so that will remain. <coughs> we know that the initial <coughs> velocity was 8, that will remain. Um, we know at that point um, it's going to be actually at that scenario initial velocity that will not be the initial velocity zero will be initial velocity okay because it'll be at its peak here and uh, we're going to start from that scenario where it's going to start rolling back down um, so yeah that will be the same and so we've got to set the suvat separately sorry i'm going to restart this so suvat we know that its displacement will be so we'll find the time p to return to its initial position from its highest point so from its highest point it's 3.55 meters at that highest point the particle has come to a rest so it's going to be zero and we can work out the acceleration and time we will then work out the time from there now when we're working at acceleration here we're going to again use um, force equals mass times acceleration but this time remember this particle is coming down okay it's coming down with this force and this time the friction will oppose motion so friction will go that way okay just be careful of that one so this particle is going to be coming down with this port and friction is opposing motion so this time we're going to again use force equals mass times acceleration but in this case the force coming down which will be um, mg sine 45 and friction is going to be opposing it this time which will be minus 0 0.3 mg cos 45 so that's going to be opposing it that's going to cause mass times acceleration again we can change my color there again we can cancel out the mass so acceleration in this scenario coming down will be, I'm just going to put it in my calculator, 9.8 sine uh, 45 minus 0.3 times 9.8 times cos 45. So the acceleration now is going to be 4.8. Five. Now, also note that because we're treating this motion coming down, we're saying that the distance is 3.5, now it's going to travel, and we're going to call this positive 4.85, because that's the speed it's coming down at, the acceleration it's coming down at, sorry, 
Okay, so we're treating all the motion going downwards, friction's going against it, and we need to find what time is t. So we've got, um, got s, we've got u, we've got a, we need to find t. So in this scenario, we can just use um, our normal equation, so I'm just going to put it here, I'm running out of space. So we can say s equals um, u t plus half a t squared, where that's going to be 3.55. Uh, now u is 0, so that's gone. A is going to be half of that, so 4.85 times 0.5 equals, so I'll just put that here, um, 2.43, which is uh, in my calculator, three single figures, t squared. If I rearrange that, divide 3.55 by 2.43, I'm just keeping that in my calculator, getting t squared, and then I'm going to square root that. So if I get 3.55 shared by my answer from the previous, I'll get t squared to be 1.463 blah blah blah. I'll square root that, and t is equal to 1.2, I'm going to call it 1 to 3 simple figures. Calculator goes 1.209, etc. The time it takes to come back is going to be 1.21, uh, sorry, 1.21 seconds. Okay, sorry I got a bit messy with the space running out. Okay, hope that was okay. If not, just uh, rewind it and have a look at what's going on. Okay, thank you.